Picture this. Somewhere off the Oregon coast, massive machines are dropping 35-ton boulders into churning Pacific waters. The project? A six-and-a-half-mile wall that's been under construction for over a century. But this isn't your typical border wall. This barrier stands between life and death for thousands of sailors, protects billions in annual trade, and guards against one of nature's most violent forces. Welcome to the Columbia River Bar, where the Pacific Ocean has claimed thousands of ships and earned the nickname Graveyard of the Pacific. If you're fascinated by massive engineering projects that push the limits of human capability, hit the subscribe button and let's dive into why America is spending $250 million to build a wall in the ocean. The Columbia River isn't your average waterway. Stretching 1,243 miles from the Canadian Rockies to the Pacific, it drains an area larger than France. 258,000 square miles across seven U.S. states and one Canadian province. This river moves some serious water. We're talking 192 million acre feet annually, making it the fourth largest river in North America by volume. To put that in perspective, that's enough water to cover the entire state of California in nearly two feet of water every single year. But here's where it gets interesting. The Columbia River system generates nearly half of the Pacific Northwest electricity through 19 hydroelectric dams. The Grand Coulee Dam alone produces enough power for 2.3 million homes. Without this river, Seattle goes dark, Portland shuts down, and the entire regional economy collapses. The problem? All that economic power means nothing if ships can't safely reach the ocean. Where the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean lies one of the most dangerous shipping channels on Earth. The Columbia River Bar has earned its terrifying nickname through over 150 years of maritime disasters. And here's what makes this place so deadly. The Columbia River carries massive amounts of sediment, about 15 million tons a year. When this sediment-heavy freshwater slams into Pacific saltwater, it creates constantly shifting sandbars that can trap ships in minutes. But the sandbars are just the beginning. The collision between river current and ocean waves creates turbulent cross currents that can flip vessels without warning. During Pacific storms, waves can reach 40 feet high, turning the bar into a washing machine of death. The numbers tell the whole story. An estimated 2,000 documented shipwrecks, more than 700 lives lost, ships ranging from small fishing boats to massive cargo vessels, all claimed by the same stretch of water. In 1906, the passenger steamer Valencia ran aground in a storm, killing 164 people. In 1961, the fishing vessel La Merced disappeared with all hands during what locals call a sneaker wave, a rogue wave that appears without any warning. Even today, with modern navigation equipment and weather forecasting, the Coast Guard station at Cape Disappointment, yes, that's the actual name, conducted 138 rescue operations in 2018 alone, saving 235 lives. By the 1880s, it became clear that nature needed some human intervention. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers proposed something audacious build massive stone barriers called jetties to force the river into a deeper, more predictable channel. Construction began in 1885 on the South Jetty, extending from the Oregon side. This wasn't simply moving some rocks around. Engineers had to transport millions of tons of stone by rail and barge, then precisely place each piece to withstand Pacific storms. The South Jetty alone stretches four and a half miles into the ocean and rises 30 feet above the waterline. By the time it was completed in 1895, it had consumed 2 million tons of stone and cost $2 million, remarkably coming in way under budget. But one jetty just wasn't enough. In 1913, construction began on the North Jetty extending from the Washington side. This two and a half mile barrier required another massive engineering effort with workers battling harsh weather and dangerous seas. The final piece came in 1939 with Jetty A, a smaller reinforcing structure designed to fine-tune water flow. By 1946, the system was complete, 
having consumed 13 million tons of stone, enough to build a wall from New York to Philadelphia. The results were immediate and dramatic. Ship casualties dropped by over 80%. The Port of Portland became a major Pacific gateway. The Columbia River transformed from a shipping graveyard into a vital economic artery. But here's the thing about building in the ocean. The ocean always fights back. After decades of Pacific storms, the jetty system was showing serious wear. Stones had shifted, creating gaps that allowed dangerous currents to return. And some sections had settled below the waterline, reducing their effectiveness. By 2014, engineers realized they faced a choice. Rebuild the jetties or watch the Columbia River Bar return to its deadly past. The decision was obvious but the execution would be anything but simple. The modern jetty rehabilitation represents one of the most complex marine construction projects in American history. Starting in 2014, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers launched a three-phase, $250 million effort to completely rebuild the system. Phase 1 tackled Jetty A between 2016 and 2017, costing $20 million. Phase 2 addressed the North Jetty from 2018 to 2019 for $39 million. The massive Phase 3 focuses on the South Jetty, with $191 million allocated and work on going through 2025. But this isn't just about replacing old stones with new ones. Modern jetty construction requires precision that would make a Swiss watchmaker jealous. The new jetties use 360,000 tons of high-density granite boulders, each weighing between 5 and 35 tons. And these aren't just random rocks. Each stone is carefully selected and shaped to interlock with its neighbors, creating a barrier that can flex with ocean forces without breaking apart. The logistics alone are staggering. Granite comes from quarries in Washington and Oregon transported by specialized barges and trucks capable of handling multi-ton loads. A single barge can carry 3,000 tons of stone, requiring multiple trips per week during construction season. The real star of the operation is a customized Caterpillar 6020B excavator fitted with a 90-foot arm and GPS technology. This machine can precisely place 35-ton boulders and churning seas with accuracy measured in inches. The operator sits in a climate-controlled cab, using joysticks and computer screens to position stones that most people couldn't move with a forklift. Weather creates constant challenges. Pacific storms can shut down operations for weeks, forcing crews to work within narrow seasonal windows. When conditions allow, teams work around the clock, racing against the next weather system. Each stone must be placed according to precise engineering specifications. Computer models calculate exactly where each boulder should sit to maximize the jetty's ability to channel water flow while withstanding enormous wave forces that could destroy improperly placed structures. Modern jetty construction relies on sophisticated engineering that didn't exist during the original build. Underwater sonar mapping creates detailed pictures of the seafloor allowing engineers to identify weak spots and plan stone placement with surgical precision. Wave modeling software simulates thousands of storm scenarios, predicting how different stone arrangements will perform under extreme conditions. This technology helped engineers design a jetty system that should last another 50 years. GPS technology allows the massive excavator to place stones within inches of their target location, even in rough seas. The machine's computer system automatically compensates for wave motion, ensuring precision placement that would be impossible with manual operation. The numbers behind this project reveals why America considers it worth every penny. The Columbia River system handles an average of 20 to 22 billion dollars in annual trade, making it one of the nation's most valuable shipping channels. Wheat from Montana and Idaho flows through Columbia River ports to markets in Asia. Aluminum from regional smelters ships worldwide. Container vessels bring manufactured goods from the Pacific Rim to American consumers. And without safe passage through the Columbia River bar, this entire economic ecosystem collapses. Portland's ports would become irrelevant. Regional agriculture would lose its primary export route. Thousands of jobs would just disappear. 
The Coast Guard's rescue statistics underscore the human cost. Station Cape Disappointments crews risk their lives regularly to save mariners caught in the bar's dangerous waters. Every successful jetty repair means fewer emergency calls and fewer lives at risk. Even with $250 million in modern improvements, the jetty system requires constant maintenance. Pacific storms continue their relentless assault, shifting stones and testing every engineering decision. The Army Corps of Engineers maintains a permanent monitoring system, using underwater cameras and sonar to track jetty condition in real time. And when problems emerge, repair crews mobilize quickly to prevent small issues from becoming major ones. This isn't a project with a clear finish line. The Pacific Ocean doesn't negotiate or compromise. As long as the Columbia River flows to the sea, America will need to maintain these barriers against one of nature's most powerful forces. The Columbia River jetties represent more than just a shipping channel improvement. They're a proving ground for marine construction techniques that could protect coastlines worldwide as climate change intensifies storm patterns and sea levels continue to rise. Lessons learned from placing 360,000 tons of stone in Pacific waters inform coastal protection projects from California to the Carolinas. The precision placement technology developed for jetty construction now helps build seawalls, breakwaters, and other marine infrastructure. And as global trade continues growing and extreme weather becomes more common, projects like the Columbia River jetties become even more critical. They represent humanity's determination to work with natural forces rather than simply surrender to them. When construction wraps up in 2025, the Columbia River jetties will stand as one of America's most impressive engineering achievements. A six and a half mile wall of precisely placed granite, protecting billions in trade and countless lives from the Pacific Ocean's fury. This $250 million investment ensures that the graveyard of the Pacific remains safely in the past, while the Columbia River continues powering the Pacific Northwest economy for generations to come. So the next time you see products marked Made in Asia or enjoy Pacific Northwest wheat, remember the massive stone barriers that made the trade possible. Sometimes the most important infrastructure is the kind most people never see. But what do you think? Is spending $250 million on ocean jetties worth it to protect our trade routes and save lives? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed learning about this incredible engineering project, make sure to subscribe for more stories about the massive infrastructure that keeps our world running.